Then that trophy. I'm counting on you to go balls out for it. I only have one speed. Balls out, out. He don't look so bad to me. 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 Once a season, the monsters of the spooky time fright hour come here to my island to test their skill in my tournament. Funny tests from around the world, each with their own styles, strengths, and weaknesses, will battle to the death for your entertainment. We have an axe-wielding giant. We have the most powerful witch in Russia. We have an evil psychic painting. Plus 13 others. But only one shall win. Welcome to Uncle Monsters Season 5 Kumite! We're your hosts. My name is Chris Anderson, but if you went to high school with me, you could call me Shibby. And I'm Ethan Sareski. And hey, uh, listen, man, anyone can do anything. It's up to themselves. All the taste is like just the right intentions. It's true, Jimmy. <laughs> but why don't you hand the phone, hand uh, the microphone back over to my co-host, Ethan Sareski. Thank you, Ghost of Jimmy. He, he did. He did so. He always listens to you, Shibs. Well, that's because I have the power to control ghosts. You should hear what he says to me when no one's around about the neighbor's dog. Now, listen, uh, we're talking about the Kumite, the season five Kumite. Ethan, are you excited? I, I couldn't be more excited. This, this to me, is better than a commander's game mixed with a Lady Huskies game for the championship. No, this is truly the Super Bowl of cryptids. And uh, in season five, we've got five, four great divisions. Ethan, are you excited to learn the divisions? Do you want to I know the divisions? It. It's it's always one of my favorite parts of the Kumite, other than now the intro, because that was fucking insane. Um, no, I this is one of my favorite parts. Tell me, what are the divisions for the Kumite 5? Okay, well, our first division. We've got, they're bigger than you expect, the Giants <laughs> with Paul Bunyan. Flatwoods Monster, quite tall, somewhere around nine feet. The Mongolian Death Worm, very big for a worm. <laughs> and, of course, the Gasha Dokuro. Ah, I gotcha Dokuro. I love that one. Up next, we've got, of course, representing the religions of the world, the Holy Rollers. <laughs> we've got... The Grunch, obviously a product of Nolan style voodoo. We've got the Golem of the Jewish faith. We've got the Bishop of the Sea. And obviously, we've got the Rougarou, who will attack you if you do not go to Lent. Very Catholic monster right there. <laughs> Gets very angry about that. For our third division, we've got those classic villains of the Harlem Globetrotters. That's right, the European elite. What? Not talking, of course, about the Washington Generals, but the one time I went to see the Harlem Globetrotters, the team they were playing, was called the European elite. Oh, I was wondering, because I, I, I thought they only played the Generals. No, they have a. I think now they have a few different villain teams that they rotate around so they can have different shows. They should make it more like the WWF and have someone like get stabbed, but no one really knows it's fake. That'd be great. I would watch that. I feel like, yeah, you would, but this is most, when I went, it was mostly 10 year olds and under. I would have watched know, it when I was 10, to be fair. To be fair. In the European elite, we've got, of course, the Tommy Knockers from Germany and Wales, Baba Yaga from Russia, the Wood Woses, obviously from all over medieval Europe, 
And, of course, that classic English painting, Man Proposes, God Disposes. <laughs> and for our fourth and final division, we've got, that's right, Repin, the Antipodes, the Down Under Division. They are from the Global South. <laughs> so we've got the Blue Mountains Panther from Sydney, Australia. Yateveo from South America and Western Africa. The Runamula from Peru. And the Kangamato from Zambia. So those are our four divisions. That is a strong bracket right there. I'll tell you that. Yeah, we got a lot of heavy hitters in here. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to say right now, we have two entrants that are canonically invulnerable and immortal. We're going to take that off the table. They will just be very tough. Somewhere <laughs> not quite Superman tough, but stronger, like supernaturally tough, let's say. How about Batman tough? Because that's in between man and super... No, because because Batman is canonically has no superpowers and is just a man. I feel like this person does need superpowers, but maybe oh, okay. not as as tough as being literally invulnerable and immortal. Uh, let's say maybe something closer to uh, uh, Captain America tough. Oh, OK. So invulnerable and immortal. No, no. But, you know, like super soldier soon. Serum. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they've had a little bit of super soldier serum. I'll go with that. I like that. Yeah. You can't just like judge them by height and weight and be like, oh yeah, seven foot tall. Uh, Kangamato is as strong as a shack. Like, no, it's got to be stronger than a shack. I, I, I disagree, but that's whatever. <laughs> well, fair enough. All right. Well, you want to get started? I do. Let's go. What's our first division and our, our first, first division is of course the Giants. Where we've got that axe-wielding maniac from the frozen north, Mr. Paul Bunyan, taking on the mysterious traveler known as the Flatwoods Monster. Okay, so Paul Bunyan is, is um, like a big giant lumberjack with the ox, right? Really a pink ox, we found out, right? Well, we found out his real life equivalent did have a pink ox, but let's go with the myth. Let's say he's got oh, Dave the blue ox. I was thinking Fabian Fournier, the, the the dickhead Frenchman with two sets of teeth. Yes, and his uh, favorite ox, Brinny. Right, the pink ox. Exactly. I have a wait. Can they fight together? Wait, can you mean Adrian and Paul as a team, as Fabian. a tag team? Yeah, Fabian. Maybe. No, I think we've got to pick one, but I do think we can go with Paul Bunyan's like wild, exaggerated height of like 20 feet as opposed to uh, uh, Fabian's, who was what, like six foot three or something? It's just six one or six two. Yeah. Yeah. He was just like tall for someone in the 1800s when they everyone had malnutrition. <laughs> let's go with let's go with crazy tall. Let's go with a 20 foot tall Paul Bunyan. OK, for sure. Versus. The mysterious Flatwoods monster of Flatwoods, West Virginia, known for uh, being scary and possibly having nauseating powers. And what's it look like again? Uh, it looks like a pair of glowing red eyes, and it had a hood that was shaped like a spade. Oh, yeah. And it oh, had that was like scary. Little, little arms, and it seemed to uh, float above the ground, height roughly 10 feet. It was much like Orko. Yeah, yeah, it had a, a similar vibe because it had a gown that like would almost touch the ground, but it would glide around like, <laughs> a, like a nun out of a horror movie or something. There is a nun in a horror movie lately. Lately, that's been done. Like it's yeah. not like a like a theoretical yeah. thing. No, it's something that's been done many times. It's like one of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this is a weird matchup. So twenty foot tall. Can he also be an asshole with two sets of teeth? Can he have some? Let's of those? give him two sets of teeth and a bad attitude, and he does have an axe. I he think does. The odds are strongly, strongly, strongly favoring our friend Paul Bunyan. I disagree. Okay, t talk me through it. I think that he's used to being the bigger, more intimidating opponent, and I think he's a bit of a bully as mm. his real life equivalent, 
Fabian Fournier was a bit of a dickhead. And I think if he ever came face to face with someone who could at least hold their own or at least looks like a problem, I think I think it may really intimidate him to see Orko, an evil Orko floating toward him with a hood on and glowing red eyes. Are you kidding me? That he's human. He's just a giant human. Like he's going to be scared. So you think he's going to tap out? No, no. I, th- I think it'll just throw him way out. I think he may drop his axe. Is what, what, you know? Whoa, you know. I think the thing is, I the Flatwoods monsters had n- literally no canonical offensive capabilities. Oh no, I just say he would win. I just said he'd be scared at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I I think at the end of the day, we got to put this one on Paul Bunyan. I think the Flatwoods monster was actually despite his intimidating appearance, quite a gentle soul underneath it all. So he gets murdered by Fabian Fournier. <laughs> yeah, so he gets murdered by a giant French-Canadian asshole with an axe. <laughs> Paul Bunyan. Adventures. Hey, hey, Flatwoods monster, fuck you. <laughs> Up next, we've got the Holy Rollers. And this is an interesting matchup. We've got from Nolens. The Big Easy, The Grunch, and he's taking on, obviously from that classic Czechoslovakian monster. We all know that he's really Czechoslovakian. It's the Golem. <laughs> yes, the the Czech Golem. Yeah, uh, we know the Golem is an anthropomorphic animated being in Jewish folklore. Mm-hmm. And he's created from, like, clay or mud. I'm sure you could create it from anything as long as you believe and know the ritual, probably, no? Yeah, oh, I bet I could create a golem out of anything, and I bet I could do it by sundown tonight. What would you make a golem out of? Well, looking around that, I got a lot of scrap wood. I guess I could make, like, a <laughs> tall wooden boy. <laughs> oh my just, god, like a Pinocchio, but like but like broken? That's but, scary. Like, and not even carved. Like, it's just made out of, like, old 2 by 4s that <laughs> I would put hinges at the limbs. <laughs> that is fucking scary. And then draw a face on it. Do you know how scary that... That would have been scarier than a, the, how Annabelle looked, the doll. I'm going to... I'm going to make that and put that on our Instagram. I bet I could bang that out in, like, an hour. I love you. I'm I'm awaiting it. Okay, so we've got the golem. He's huge. He's defend. He's defending. He's he has no feeling. Um, and then we've got who's who's he fighting? He's fighting the Grunch. The what Grunch? It, 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 you course, go ahead. What is the yeah. Grunch? The Grunch were uh little uh like chupacabras, little sort of dog faced lizard things <laughs> that were uh made from uh balls from a demon baby uh oh yeah marie laveau uh cut the balls off of a demon baby because she didn't want the demon baby to breed obviously the balls fell to the ground and now the grunch is on the scene and he's out there and he's sucking out blood and organs uh the thing is the golem has no blood or organs oh and a distinct size advantage yeah no this this one may be a bit of a mismatch yeah, I think he's going to end up just, like, punching them into the ground, and they'll just sort of splatter in green and red goo. Yeah, I think this is a huge strength disadvantage. I, I picture him being able to go... Yeah. And I, know, I mean, I'm picturing, obviously, we, we do for a lot of our smaller monsters, we'll allow them to have groups. I'm picturing even a, a group of five grunts. Wouldn't matter. Yeah, no, because they're, they're just not going to be able to do any... Like, maybe they start ripping out chunks of clay... With their I think claws? the clay hardens. I it's not like if it was if it was normal like kiln clay, all you had to do was hit it, it would just shatter. Yeah, it's true. It is uh I imagine it to be like very dense wet clay. Like uh, the Sandman like, from uh Spider Man, except dense and wet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think I just don't think even if they were clawing at him, he'd just be like tearing them apart with his bare hands. They wouldn't be able to get into that clay fast enough. So yeah, I'm going to have to put this one on the golem. Golem advances. Wow. You know, we, we should have little bumpers in between and be like, uh, winner, golem. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Or uh, I forgot that I was just going to throw an explosion between every round. <laughs> Up next, we've got the European elite. We've got five, count them, five. Of the little green miners 
that you and I know and love Stephen King's own Tommy Knockers from England, Wales, and the U.S. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, they do like to cross the pond. They are transcontinental, but build the we, wall. We're allowing them uh, a membership <laughs> into the uh, European elite. They're not Brexiteers. You got to at least give them that. What kills me, the funniest thing about this whole Kumite is that you saw the Globetrotters play once and they played some team no one's ever heard of that is not a reference. And you called it the European elite. Like that's like a, that's not, that's like a team they play like once every three years. Well, hey, for the real heads out there, the real Globetrotters fans. (laughs) That's true. Well, you are you know, that's a really funny thing about you is that if I found out you were like a hardcore Globetrotters fan and knew that all their points, averages per game and stuff. Did you ever uh, read about the the time when they lost? What? There was one game because the way it'll happen is they'll be sort of just playing a regular basketball game. Right. But every now and then they'll do like some basketball tricks whenever it feels appropriate right. in the game. Uh, and at, like they're supposed to sort of let the clock wind down. So that and like let the other team get the lead so they can have a big comeback at the end. That's dangerous. Yeah, but it it makes it exciting for the crowd. And normally like you give yourself like the last five minutes to start really racking up and putting points on the board. Right. But there was one game, I think it was in like the mid 70s when they lost track of time. And they didn't give themselves enough time to make a comeback. And they started just going on a furious drive. And the other team would, like had to throw the game as much as they could <laughs> without just like handing them the ball every time. But like, even still, they <laughs> ended up losing the game. <laughs> and all the kids in the crowd started crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a surprise for those kids. Yeah, yeah. A, a memory they'll never forget. What is that like? Like, is that like finding out Santa isn't real? I mean, you you got to have some, kind of a rude awakening there at some point, for sure. Yeah. Uh, that They did a lot of growing up that day. Like uh, when one of those uh, Disney characters takes its head off in front of children and sees the human head. It really traumatic. Yes, very similar. <laughs> so the Tommy Knockers versus Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga, the witch of myth and legend. Uh, metal teeth, uh, possibly an ogress. One of a trio of sisters, all sharing the same name. She flies around on a broomstick with a mortar and pestle, and she has a house that stands on chicken legs, which is dope. I think that's cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. We had a a debate as to how many chicken legs (laughs) the house had. I said two. Ethan said four. Like some sort of chicken dog. Yeah, well, I, it's got four corners, the house. I'm, I'm assuming it's box-shaped. I also imagine the hut to be circular. Oh, see, I pictured a, more of a house like, uh, you know, the gingerbread... Uh, no, the Hansel and Gretel house. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, Baba Yaga, very powerful witch. Very. Uh, n- not to be undersold, I gotta put this one on Baba Yaga. The, the Tommy Knockers were more mischievous. They're not in their natural habitat of a mine... Uh, you know, it's just on an even playing field, they're going to be outclassed. They're more like Viet Cong. And and when you fight them in their territory and you're Baba Yaga, you, you may have a disadvantage, but you're getting the octagon and they don't have the cave. There's no knocking. I mean, what are they what are, what are they going to do? I mean, it's going to be yeah, a slaughter. Yeah, they might come at her with their little pickaxes. And let me tell you, that is not going to phase as tough a lady as Baba Yaga. That's true. Boy, a lot of mismatches so far in this bracket. Well, we never know until you play them out. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, moving on to our final division, the Down Unders, <laughs> representing the Global South. <laughs> All right, we've got, here's a better matchup. We've got the Blue Mountains Panther, which is famously a panther. From Sydney, Australia. Yep, and it's taken on the Runa Mula, (laughs) which is a centaur, except the body is a mule, and it's made from a cheating wife. (laughs) A cursed cheating wife. Wait, so, like, not only do you get punished by being cuckolded, 
Then you have to walk around at parties and be like, who's your wife? Big Oh, the donkey. Yeah, she's actually outside. She can't. <laughs> I tied her to a post. She, if she came in, she would literally be shitting and pissing all over the floor. Why is she ill? She's a fucking donkey. No, because donkeys don't have that kind of control. I told I told her that we shouldn't have RSVP'd to a party on the full moon, <laughs> but no, she doesn't listen. Well, she she's a cheating wife. She always does the wrong thing. That's what happens. She's a real bummer. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, the Blue Mountains Panther is a panther. It's <laughs> a panther. So. <laughs> who, do you, who do you think uh, do you think the mule centaur the cursed mule centaur could take on a panther I think that I might put this on the panther mule centaur well you have to remember it's not just a centaur it's a cheating girlfriend centaur and cheating girlfriends are like nasty beings I think I've never been I, I mean maybe I, I probably have I just don't know that I've been cheated on but I can imagine that's a terrible feeling. So those are those are really awful ladies. So maybe they'll um, bring kind of an extra nastiness, you know, make the mule kick harder. Maybe they'll insult you, emasculate you, maybe. Uh, well, it's possible that they speak the language of Panthers. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming they speak Panther. That's OK. Let's, yeah. OK, let's say this one happens to speak Panther. Right. Let's throw her a bone. Some other guy threw her a bone. That's why she became Aruna Mula. Yeah, I deserve that. Thank you. You know, you earned it. Um, but still, like, I'm I'm thinking of this more like, could a panther take down a mule? 100%. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, without a question. Uh, no, I mean, this is, listen, he'll just bite through the brain case. I mean, it, it'll be over yeah. very quickly. Yeah, I yeah, I got to put this one in the Blue Mountains Panther. It is going to tear that cheating wife apart just like her cheating tore that marriage apart. <laughs> That'd be funny if the panther killed the the horse part first and it was just lying on its side yelling at you like emasculating stuff like this half dead cheating girlfriend. Like that's a weird So situation. you imagine this cheating girlfriend to also just be very mean. This it sounds like this person would just dump you. <laughs> I, I think people. Who, I think it's a mean cheat on you. I think it's a mean thing to cheat. I think it it, it indicates a certain level of mean spiritedness. That's fair. I'm going to say that cheating is as much a symptom as it is a cause of a problem. Back up to the giants. <laughs> We've got another very strange match here. <laughs> We've got. And in, against any other draw, I would Wait. say, boy, would he be a competitor. We just talked about a panther attacking a cheating girlfriend attached to a donkey, and then you go before this one. Now we have a weird one. <laughs> well, I said it and I meant it. Uh, just because I feel like this guy would be a competitor against almost anybody else. We've got the Mongolian death worm mm. taking on the giant... Fueled by hate, Japanese skeleton, the Gasha Dokoro. Got your nose, Shibble. Yeah, you got my Dokoro. I got your Dokoro. Now, if if the Mongolian Death Worm was taking on anyone that was alive, I would say, boy, the Mongolian Death Worm, he's going to be tough to beat. But the Gasha Dokoro, already dead. And 30 feet tall and a Japanese skeleton. That's fueled by hatred. Yeah, hatred yeah. Listen, it runs on hatred. That that's crazy. Yeah, and the Mongolian death worms. Its attacks are poisonous uh, skin coating. Doesn't sound particularly effective. It, uh, it has no skin. Yeah, so no problem. Uh, we're gonna say it's got what the uh, venomous spit. It yeah. spits a corrosive venom. Can it Maybe dissolve bones? Start... Let's say that it could, but I don't think it could very quickly. Uh, and I don't think it could dissolve enough bones to take on a chunk out of the Gasha Dokoro. Even if we tall. went as far as to say that the Mongolian death worm is relatively small, and so there should be several of them, like we do for all our smaller right. competitors, I don't think they're going to be able to produce enough venom. Uh -uh. All they've got left is their electrical attack, and I don't think the Gasha Dokoro is really going to be phased 
by a couple of uh, amps of electricity. Unless hatred is a conductor. I mean, even if it is, he's going to be grounded. He's standing on the flat <laughs> earth. I, I pictured him floating on hatred, but that's just me. Yeah, or just leaping through the air with a Superman punch from a 30-foot <laughs> tall, rage-fueled skeleton that <laughs> once ravaged the city of Kyoto for several weeks. Why didn't they ever do like a kaiju movie with him and Godzilla? God, I would love to see a kaiju that was just a fucking giant evil <sighs> skeleton. Fueled by hatred. Oh my Fueled god, what a movie. Hatred, ripping people's heads off. Hell yeah. Would it yeah, also do like say, little mean things like hack into your email and send nudes to all your family? Yeah, just stuff to embarrass you. Yeah. Sounds like the Gashadokuro advances. And I bet a lot of people are breathing a sigh of relief that they will not have to face the Mongolian death worm. That guy was a competitor. He was. All right. Up next we got, of course, the Holy Rollers. <laughs> and we've got a matchup of two Catholics, two good Catholic boys. <laughs> from the Black Sea, we've got the Bishop of the Sea. <laughs> and from the city by the bay, the jazz capital of the world. That's right. It's that Catholic werewolf, the Rougarou. So the Rougarou is from New Orleans, and he's like a jazz werewolf, kind of. Yeah. I picture him being real cool, but he is so rule bound about religion he is very yeah. very obsessive with the lent stuff i think in particular i don't think he cares if you even go on easter to church i mean I no think by then lent's lent. over yeah i don't think he cares about that at all and um on the other side you tell me the bishop of the sea is a weirdo preacher who swims uh well he's not a preacher although i guess he does do his fair share of proselytizing he is famous for converting fish to catholicism <laughs> Uh, so there could be any number of things. There's no marine abortion, I notice. No, it's true. They don't allow that. You'll never catch a fish wearing a condom. <laughs> so, uh, I think the rules of Lent don't say anything explicitly. Okay. Here's my question. Is the Kumite taking place on Lent? It has to. This battle does. Yeah. Well... I'm going to say killing a member of the clergy would be violating the rules of Lent. I'm pretty sure they don't want you to do that. Is it expressly set out? Because there's a lot of things in Catholicism that would surprise you. Well, I think in general, sinning is frowned upon. You know, uh, following your usual rules are going to be included in your rules of Lent. There's no, like... You don't get any hall passes just because it's Lent. Couldn't it be considered hunting because it's just a talking fish? I mean, you might be able to consider it fishing. Yeah. But <laughs> I consider it water hunting. I think, uh, uh, it, I, I mean, you are supposed to eat fish on Fridays during Lent. Is that right? Yes. So if this is taking place on a Friday during Lent, I think the Rougarou's got it. I think the Rougarou advances. Awesome. Jazz werewolf for the win. Wow. That's a cool name, by the way, for you. Like, wh what's your name? Uh, oh, I have a podcast. My name is Jazz Werewolf. Yeah, I host it with my uh, co-host, Underwater Panther. <laughs> We're back to the European elite. <laughs> New shit. Wait, drop it one more time. I always want to do that. New shit. Danger. Oh, it's not as fun as I thought. We've got... Those hairy wild men, the wood woeses, mm. taking on the evil psychic painting, Man Proposes, God Disposes. And Man Proposes, God Disposes is English, while the wood woeses are generally medieval Europe. Yes, England included. And th those are the hairy wild men. So hairy wild men, how many? Uh, let's go for five. Let's say these are your average size guys. We'll give them five. Okay. Very hairy though. Yes. Covered in hair, except if there are any ladies on the boobs. <laughs> no hair on the boobs. I love God. If that's true, I just love God for that. Uh, and of course, uh, the man proposes God disposes depicts, uh, polar bears ripping apart shipwrecked people. 
Yeah, but, but no, just a shipwreck. No, well, there is a rib cage that one of the polar bears is ripping the flesh off of. And uh, the painting is said to be, uh, we determined, a psychic conduit for the collective failure of the British Empire uh, <laughs> that can destroy your psyche and drive you to suicide. Man, this is, okay. I just think the wood woeses are stupid. Yeah. And now, I does think, that make them more vulnerable or less vulnerable? I think, I, I, I don't think, I mean, the, either way, they weren't going to be taking a test like those kids who stabbed their eyeballs out with the painting. That's fair. I, I picture this painting more like the Oculus mirror, like it just emanates evil. And I, I think they'll, no matter where they are, if you just throw a painting to them, they're going to be like, what the fuck? And they're going to stare at it and concentrate on it. And I think that's all you need. I don't think you need to comprehend it to any high degree. Yeah, no, I think I think what's going to happen is the man proposes, God disposes, is going to be set up uh, on an easel in <laughs> his corner of the octagon. And the uh, our <laughs> ref is going to step into the middle of the octagon. Uh uh, Mizuguchi, and he's gonna Mazagati. be Mazagati, and he's gonna go keep it clean. Let's fight! And then uh, the five wood woeses are all going to instantly bite their own tongues off and start clawing out their own eyes. <laughs> I love that. I'm picturing. I'm picturing like right before they introduce them, like you know, some huge dude smearing Vaseline on the painting. You know, yeah, <laughs> spraying water on it out of a water bottle. Oh, what if that ruins the painting? Yeah, I think his corner man would be better trained. You're right. That. He would have his own. Yeah, he would have an art major corner man. I think your prediction is absolutely correct. And the wood woes just tear their own eyes out after biting off their tongues because that painting is accursed. All right. And for our final battle of the first round. Back to the down unders. We've got that evil tree, the Yateveo, mm. taking on the immortal pterodactyl, the Kangamato. And the Yateveo is, of course, of South, uh, South America and Africa, kind of like a Venus flytrap, but huge and mean and uh, just murderous. And the Kangamato is from Zambia and is like lizard pterodactyl chupacabra-like, correct? Yes, and was uh, it can have up to a 100 foot wingspan, up uh, from four to 100 feet. Yeah, somewhere in between the range of four as a baby, 100 as a full grown adult. Really, uh, gets to be quite big. Maybe it's just, it's just a dragon. I mean, it very well could be. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna say it is going to be. Uh, I was also canonically this was one of our immortal invulnerables. So it is going to, in our case, get the Captain America Super Soldier Syndrome. Kongamato? Yes. The Kongamato oh. was immortal and invulnerable. Oh, my God. So that's right out. It is now mortal and vulnerable, but very tough. <laughs> the Ataveo, obviously, as a uh, bush that looks like a couch, <laughs> uh, might be a little bit more vulnerable i think it might be vulnerable to some of the uh, bites and snaps and claws of uh the congamato my couch is fucked up just for my dog's fingernails yeah yeah you think you could stand up to a pterodactyl the size of an elephant <laughs> my couch no no, no that's I, a great way to put it yeah i don't think so i think the congamato advances on this one yeah i agree with you all right and we're halfway through the show. That means it's time for us to say goodbye to our season's favorite new segment. Come and date me. Oh, God. You remixed it. This is one of the scariest things I've ever heard.
So, is, Ethan. Is that to get around the algorithm? <laughs> no, that was because this is our final version, our final entry into Come and Date, Ethan. Oh, yes. It's, it's all come full circle. Well, no, because I don't have a girlfriend now, so it has not come full circle. It's all come straight line. <laughs> Ethan, looking back at the last 16 episodes, the last four months. Oh, my God. I've been single a long time. How do you feel? How far do you feel you've come? How do you feel you've grown? <laughs> do you feel like you're more ready? Do you feel like this segment helped you all at all? I, I think the segment definitely helped me. Uh, we explored so many topics related to my singleness and what I'd like in the future as opposed to the past. And I just feel I've learned so much. And um, the main thing I learned is that if a girl works with autistic kids, it doesn't mean she's like an angel or super nice. It just means they pay her. I mean, it's true. You can't take too much meaning out of someone's job in a capitalist society. Yeah, I, I I learned my lesson on that one. It cost me four years of my life. So four months later, and still, when I ask you about your dating life, your first answer is thoughts about your ex. Oh, you know why? Oh, I can't. I'll tell you after the show. Okay. Uh, but there's a reason. Least. Yeah, I can't, I can't say that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I'm ready to meet and greet some late, I guess, mingle. What is it? I'm single and ready to mingle and ready to meet and greet some ladies. Like, I feel more excited about it. You know, I feel back to my old self. Um, not, not in the bad way. Uh, I feel back to myself in terms of confidence. And like, you know, I think I've, I've realized that um, it doesn't matter that I've gained a little weight. And nope. I should just be me and be happy the way I am. And that I will find a lady who's like me. Yeah, you will, uh, I hope, go out there and uh, continue to uh, fight for what you want and uh, the life that you want to be living. And I uh, hope that uh, the wind is at your back. <laughs> and obviously, if there are any big updates, we know that you'll be telling the listeners about them. Of course, so, of course, of course. So stay tuned for that in season six, when maybe we'll have some exciting other new segments. <laughs> uh, we'll see what we can think of. Maybe something more monster focused. It did always feel like we like came to a dead stop in terms of monster momentum every time we yeah. came to that segment in the middle of the show. Yeah, maybe I could have. Well, I, I mean, I could have. No, you should have no. dated a cryptid. That really would have helped. Uh, if I, you don't think I would date a cryptid? I would. Next season, that's when I'm... No, no. What's no, the no. Jewish vampirist called? Uh, the uh, Estri. My mother would like her. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Ow. And she's stealing your semen every night. You gotta like that. If that's what she wants to call it, I do not care. So we're back to the... I haven't had my semen stolen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> We've got... We're on to the... Uh, quarterfinals i think no we're on to the we're on to the round of eight the sweet eight they call it <laughs> no they call it the washington elites eight they are uh, they obviously call it the great eight <laughs> uh in the giants division this is a good matchup now we're getting some quality matchups mm. Who is going to be the biggest big man of them all in our battle of Paul Bunyan versus the Gasha Dokuro? This is a battle. This is a, this is the one that you wanted to see. If you got tickets to this, this is the spectacle of the season. I would think they set up the tournament just to get this battle if this was the NCAAs. Yeah, I mean, I would almost say it was rigged. This is going to be the ratings winner. And audience, you're only getting in this round. Imagine what is yet to come. <laughs> so who do you think? Paul Bunyan does have an axe. He's got a bad Dokuro. attitude. He's a dickhead. He, is a, he does have a bad attitude. He does have extra teeth. Oh, yeah, two sets. But if you want to talk about bad attitudes, the Gasha Dokoro is canonically fueled by hatred of the living. Oh, and he'll be so annoyed by, like, an asshole Canadian. Oh, my God, it'll get him so... Oh, he will be irate. 
Yeah, yeah. Because the whole time, you know, in like the pre-fight, the the weigh-in, then they'll have their little press conference. Yeah. And Paul Bunyan will just be talking shit the whole time. And Gasha Doker will just be over by his manor, just like panting. Just like, yeah. Argh. <laughs> as they walk by the fans he just slaps a child <laughs> like, I just picture him doing horrible shit i'm afraid of the gacha dokoro yeah no i i think the gacha dokoro's pure hatred might be enough to take the day i i think so because i mean i hear about Fa- fabian fournier and i hate him <laughs> yeah and he also does have a a 10 foot he is uh 50 larger than paul bunyan being uh, 30 feet tall as opposed to Paul's 20 feet tall. Hey, Japanese skeleton. <laughs> hey, hey, F you skeleton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Gasha Dokoro advances after grabbing Paul Bunyan by the shoulders by the and Dokoro. biting his head clean off. <laughs> <laughs> and then spitting it out in, in, in just in spite, just disdain. Yeah. Onto the Holy Rollers. This is a good matchup. This is another good one. I'm excited for this one. We've got all the way from Prague, the Golem. Oh. Taking on, obviously, the Zion Williamson of Monsters, the Rougarou. It's always injured. Uh, because they're both from Charms. No, Charm City's Baltimore. They're both from <laughs> the Big Easy. The Big Easy, Nolans, Jazz City. <laughs> uh, so yeah. What are your thoughts when you hear about this matchup? I like this one. This is another good spectacle. I think Baba Yaga is. I mean, gold. I said Baba Yaga. The golem is such a. He reminds me of the Terminator. Yeah, because he's not. He's not made of. He's not organic, really. And if he no, is, it's not pain. phased by pain. Nothing. He just. He's just a murderer, just with his eyes set on a, you. Not. You can't like throw someone in front of you. He'll walk right by them. Yeah, yeah. I think the Rougarou is obviously going to have some advantages in terms of speed. Yeah, I think the claws and the bite. Uh, could do some damage, but once again, this clay doesn't seem like, you know, because it doesn't bleed. It probably just closes up after it's opened. Yeah, it, he could very well have not just Captain America style super strength, but Wolverine style healing powers. Regenerative skill. Uh, that is a distinct possibility. And uh, certainly a quality of certain types of golems in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Some of them do have regenerative powers. Oh, well, that's that makes sense. So, yeah, I think I think the golem is just too tough. I think the Rougarou is going to get some licks in. But I think and he's going to be very nimble. He's going to be very hard to catch. But it's sort of going to be like uh, what they thought. Ali versus Foreman was going to be like. Yeah. Yeah. Where he just sort of w- slowly walls him off and gets him into a corner and just grabs him and just makes a mess of him. Just so punches golem, right through his skull. Yeah. Just turns him literally into a jazz flavored pulp. <laughs> That'd be funny if there was a, it was, if there was a drink that was jazz flavored and you just didn't explain it. You just yeah, heard jazz I, flavored. <laughs> that, I bet Coca Cola is going to put that out in the next five years. That'd be awesome. The Golem advances, and that's right. That means we're heading back to the European elite. Exclusive. So we've got in this corner the most powerful witch in Russia, Baba Yaga. And in the other, the psychic painting with the powers of the collective failures of the British Empire, man proposes, God disposes. What This is my favorite matchup since the, this is equal to the Gacha Dokoro versus Paul Bunyan. This is big for me. Yeah, yeah. This, this round has been fantastic. I, so, I don't even, how do you see it starting off? Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
Baba Yaga, powerful magic. Man proposes, God disposes, powerful psychic. Which one of these? Okay, so let's say they're both incredibly powerful because I do feel like the psychic weight of the collective failure of the British Empire is a very powerful uh, force. True, but it's hard to compare. Like, how do you compare that to the most powerful witch in Russia? Yeah, I mean, if we want to go through in terms of global influence, global power, global scale of uh, uh, force, if you want to take Russia versus the height of the British Empire, the height of the Russian Empire, mm. they'll be, uh, I would say, comparable forces. So, I, yeah, I was about to say, what if she was a symbol of uh, the collective failure of the Russian Empire? Yeah. So what I think it's going to come down to is, is Baba Yaga going to be more weak to psychic than man proposes is weak to magic? Who's susceptible to what? I think, okay, I think man proposes, God disposes, of course, the painting of uh, polar bears eating a shipwreck um, <laughs> that makes yeah. you gouge your eyes out. Um, I, I think it's composed of dark magic. I think that the collective failures was channeled through dark magic. I think its power okay. is dark magic. And I think Baba Yaga has such a mastery of dark magic. I mean, I don't even know if man proposes God disposes is sentient. I would imagine not. Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, I believe it was more of a, 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 a psychic fetish was how I referred to it. So I, I think that Baba Yaga may even uh, be skilled in necromancy or controlling paintings. Like I, I feel like she has such a mastery of magic and that's the core of the painting. Okay, I famously argued that it was in no way magical and 100% pure psychic. Right. Uh, but if if I'm going to say that Baba Yaga will have encountered psychic situations before. Right. I don't think that any proper magics have been brought to bear against man proposes, God disposes. Mm. I think a fireball is going to take this thing right up. Yeah, I can see her just just incinerating it. I mean, we're talking about the most powerful witch in Russia, which of course is known for its cheap export is witches. It's true. <laughs> Baba Yaga advances. They're Sorry. on the front lines in the Ukraine. <laughs> Sorry, man proposes, God disposes. <laughs> Don't let me get wet. <laughs> the Ukrainian people are just like, what the fuck? <laughs> on to... The Down Unders, we've got the Blue Mountains Panther, the pride of Sydney, <laughs> taking on the pterodactyl the size of an elephant, the Kangamato. This cool. is our least compelling fight of this round, I'm going to say. Yeah. Unless you can argue a path to victory for the Blue Mountains Panther. It, it's think... a panther, dude. We're talking about basically we're talking about very similar skill sets, and one of them has a hundred foot wingspan. Yeah, it just we're coming down to strictly a, a size question. They're just we're operating arrow. on a different scale. He also has an aerial attack. It's true. Yeah. Also, uh, that uh, attack from above. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Blue Mountains Panther. Sorry. To our uh, wonderful guest, Al Bates. Al, sorry. Maybe next maybe next season you'll make it all the way, Al. It's true. Season six, we do plan on reaching out to Al again. Keep your fingers crossed. We'll be able to get him. Uh, and he'll be able to clear some time in his schedule for us. That would be a real treat. That would be awesome. Uh, but we've got uh, the Kongamato. So we've moved on to the semifinals. Mm. What's this called? This is, of course... The Fantastic Four. <laughs> yes, of course. I, I like how we're just keeping it. It's very much like any other tournament. Yes. This is obviously just the standard sports terminology that I use when I'm talking about my favorite sports. I call it the Courageous Quartet is what I'm used to calling it. Mm, yes, the Quattro. <laughs> Representing the Giants, we're going to be having the Gasha Dokoro. Oh, God. Representing uh, the Holy Rollers, we're going to have the Golem. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, representing the European elite, we've got Baba Yaga. <laughs> it sounds like a real team that she's the captain of. Yeah. And representing the the down unders, we've got the Kangamato. So a couple of uh, real nasty boys in here. This is a great uh, Fantastic Four. Yeah, they don't make Fantastic Fours like this every season. Listeners, aren't you glad you tuned in? So we've I mean, got. I was impressed our, with our excellent eight, but this Fantastic Four is something else. Yeah, boy, I can't wait to see who's our terrible twosome. <laughs> but for our first semifinal, we've got the Gasha Dokoro taking on the Golem. Best fight so far. Yes. Now, the question is one, I think, of toughness. Now, canonically, if it's going to come down to toughness, then we have to say, and I know I said we weren't going to say it, but I have to say it, the Gashidokuro is canonically immortal and invincible. Invisible? Invincible. It can also be invisible. Right, I was about to say, yeah, I thought I remembered it, but it, but it wouldn't be during the fight. I no, it, I mean, it wouldn't be for a fight versus the golem. I don't think it would be effective. Uh, for some reason, the golem gives me the vibe that it can see invisible things. Oh, yeah. I like the same way that. like the predator has heat vision. Oh. Like, it just gives me that kind of vibe. You can't hide from him. He's determined. Do you He's think he does? Out. Do you think he does mimicry? Oh, I think the golem, if you, you could get a golem to do mimicry, he could be over there like, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <gasps> How could, wait, maybe it does that. How confusing that would be to a hate-filled uh, skeleton. It's true. He hates the living, but he doesn't hate the dead. And he also doesn't hate the inanimate. Oh, so he may so be So his confused. hatred powers might be nullified. But he knows it's a fight, and he is 30 feet tall. He does hate things that he's fighting, and he's awful fucking big. Yeah, but I mean, how do you fucking mean? But but bone is only so hard. Clay reforms if you cut it with a knife, or if you like. But it's that... true. canonically the only way to really stop the golem to is erase to erase the olive on his head. Yeah, the symbol carved into its head, the olive. Now, historically, the only way to stop a Gashadokuro is to. Uh, bury a dead man's skull <laughs> in the bay by Tokyo. <laughs> uh, boy, the, <laughs> I hate to say this one's going to go to a draw. I mean, this one's probably going to have to come down to the judges. I think how, strong, gonna... how strong is a golem? Like, what can it punch through? I don't think it could punch through like an inch of steel. How can it break a bone? Yeah, of course it could break a bone. Yeah, but could it break a bone that's five times as thick as a bone? And I think it could if it really was like twisting and like working its way into it. It's also but stronger than... Wait, wait. It's more than five times stronger than a person. It's true, but I don't think your average person could snap like a femur in half with their bare hands. I... You've never snapped a fucking femur in half, you pussy. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I guess people do snap like, like maybe if he tried to grapple with him, but also it's going to be a problem of leverage, right? Yeah. Like he's not going to be able to wrap his hand. His hands aren't going to be five times as large. So he's not going to be able to get them around the width of the bone. I think. Yeah, but you got to imagine the bone is very dry. And when you're grappling, the drier you are, the more susceptible to submissions. And of course, with a submission, you have more leverage to break a bone. It's true, but once again, I think leverage against something that that size. Yeah, a golem is extremely fucking big and strong too. Here's here's my ultimate argument. Okay. That uh, also without muscles, I think it's a lot harder to uh, get someone into a submission because your bones can just go any fucking way. Neither of them have muscle. Um, I think <laughs> this one ends up going to the judges. I don't think either of these combatants end up falling. I think this goes the full 15 rounds. Then who wins it on points? This is interesting. So this comes down to style points. Not style points. It's 10-9 rounds. 
Three, right. ten, three, three rounds, you know, ten to the winner, nine to the loser for each round. Unless there's a knockdown, it's an eight. All right. Even round is nine, nine. Could either of the women, ten, ten. could either of them get a knockdown? Yes. I think, boy, and we're, I'm sorry we're going, getting lost in the weeds on this one, listeners, but boy, with a fight like this. You, know, why you are gotta you here? make sure you make the right call. If you don't want to hear this, you, you probably turned it off a long time ago. <laughs> I'm gonna say with those long arms, the Gasha Dokoro could do get some good shoves, could get some good, you know, like just pushing downwards on him with all that big skeleton weight. You know, I think he's gonna be able to get a couple pins. He's not gonna be able to get any submissions. But I think he's going to be able to control the fight a lot. You think? Okay. All right. I well, think, if he has ground control time, if, if this is going to the ground and you're saying he'll control the ground game, then he's going to win on points. Yeah, because I think I, neither of them are going to be particularly nimble. But I imagine that the with the size and the slight agility advantage that I would give the Gasha Dokoro, I'd have to put it in a Gasha Dokoro. All right, I, 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 yeah, I think it's that close. It goes to points and maybe thirty twenty nine, or yeah, thirty. Yeah, 29. I know, th- this is going to be one that people are going to be like rewatching. This is going to be a clinic. This is going to be an all time classic. Yeah, fight. But I think ultimately, the Gashidokuro takes. But the golem can definitely leave with his head held high. Yeah, no, no nothing to be ashamed of. Definitely would be like someone that you would want coming back. If there was a way, <laughs> once we do 16 seasons, we'll do. <laughs> unless we do the top four from each season. Yeah. Yeah. That could be good. Uh, well, up next in our other semifinal, it's Baba Yaga versus the Kanga Mato. I don't think this one is as close. No, I think Baba Yaga is just going to be a little bit too tough. She She's playing on a different plane. You know, the Gacha Dokoro is a, I mean, the, excuse me, the Kangamato is a humongous pterodactyl. Like, those ex, those were, like, around, you know, and got killed by stuff. So I would think an incredibly powerful ancient witch could figure out what to do with, like, a pterodactyl. Yeah, I'm sure she's had fights with dragons. <laughs> That's got to be pretty comparable. You know what I mean? Like this is this is gonna be in her wheelhouse. This remind me of Dragon Fight. <laughs> I remember how I killed the dragon. And that's how I kill you. <laughs> that was a good Baba Yaga. That 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 freaked me out a little bit. I like that. Yeah, so how I does think... the Konga Mato talk. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> some good trash talk in these fights. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, all the talk in the world is not going to save the Kangamato in this one. Baba Yaga obviously going to uh, transform him into a frog or some shit. And then step on his face. Yeah. And so Baba Yaga advances. If if you, like, had someone who was really, you didn't like, would you rather turn them into a frog or turn them into a frog and then step on them? Oh, boy. Uh, I really dislike them. You hate them. Okay, I really, I just, ooh, ooh, and uh, yeah, I don't want to step on anybody. I'll turn them into a frog. Okay. I think that's crueler, in a way, because then they have to live out the less, rest of their life as a frog. Yeah, but maybe I could change them back if I uh, have a change of heart. Oh, okay. Understood. You're going to keep it as a pet? I mean, I wouldn't want Look it to be. Wait, you're dangerous. enslaving someone after you turn them into a fucking animal, and that's less cruel than just ending its life. All right, whatever. No, it would probably be like an hour or two. I'd be like, okay. I could see now, you, poke, now that you know holes that in the plastic you. so it can breathe. Yeah, I'd get some crickets that I'd throw in there. <laughs> On to the finals. What do they call this? This is, of course, the terrible twos. Oh, I thought this was the cool couple. This is the demonic dose or duo. You pick, you pick listeners. <laughs> We've got 30 feet tall, skeletal, invisible, 
fueled by hatred of the living, the Gasha Dokoro. And in the other corner, we've got Miss Metal Teeth herself, Russia's own Baba Yaga. Great matchup. What are 30, your thoughts? 30 foot tall Japanese skeleton fueled by hate versus incredibly powerful ancient evil witch. This is a matchup for the ages, really. Um, what, what animated the gacha dokoro? That was, of course, the, uh, sorceress, uh, daughter of Tyra no Makoto. Let me check <laughs> my notes here. You know, it was fun in, uh, Pride, which was the Japanese equivalent of the UFC. It was bigger than the UFC at the time mm -hmm. in like the early 2000s. And like, I guess in Japan, they say your last name first and it always sounded so cool when they uh introduced fedor they'd be like a million and go and everyone would go nuts and they would it just it, it made for such a cool spectacle and there were guys in like diapers playing these big drums it was so cool sick uh the uh <laughs> you can edit that i don't know where that came from no that's all right no it's okay to talk about how cool pride was it was awesome. uh obviously uh the gasha dokoro was uh, created by a magical spell by Takiyasha Hime. Oh, yes. The the uh, princess of the uh, killed samurai that, who uh, had a failed rebellion against the emperor. Now, but, but the emperor was scared of my father. I'm sorry. I think I did no, that. The last emperor time. should have been scared of your 30 foot tall skeleton. <laughs> No, I have a question. We know the origin of the Gacha Dokoro, but what do you think created Baba Yaga? That's a good question. Thank you. I don't think she was ever human. Oh, interesting. I think she is very old and in some sense is fueled by uh, Russia itself. She's uh, like a totemic uh, avatar of Russia. She must be awful violent. Yes. Uh, and uh, very homophobic. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they're good people. Wait, didn't they just say, didn't they just have a law that says, like, being gay is illegal? Isn't that new? I, I, I haven't heard about it. No, I mean, in the past couple days. It's crazy. Yeah, it's getting worse over there. Sorry, Baba. Uh, so, the thing I think is that the Gasha Dokoro was unable to be stopped by any of uh, the people who knew about magic in the employ of the emperor, right? Like, you got to figure, while the Gasha Dokoro was tearing ass up and down the streets of Tokyo for 30 <laughs> days, the gotcha emperor would... Dokoro! And they would run. <laughs> yeah, I'd fucking run. He's <laughs> biting people's heads off and squirting blood into the mouth. enjoying it. That's the fucked up part. Yeah, it fucking loves it. It's doing this shit every night. And the Emperor's got to be calling, like, everybody you can find. Anybody who knows anything about fucking magic. Nobody can do shit. He's unstoppable. The only thing you can do is back down. Because he's fueled by righteous anger and hatred, which I think is so powerful. Okay. Now, the Emperor did not have anyone in his employ strong, as, strong with magic as Baba Yaga. Entirely possible. Oh, Although the well, Emperor... I'm likely. The emperor is the direct descendant of a god. <laughs> the emperor doesn't have anything to do with it. It doesn't matter. The emperor, uh, the emperor, technically as a demigod, might have powers in and of himself comparable to that. I think the Dalai Lama oh, made yeah. Steven Seagal a demigod, so I'm not impressed. Fair enough. Man, I, I, what does? Okay, so we know the Gacha Dokoro can physically beat Baba Yaga, but what does ba Baba Yaga have it at her disposal that can damage the... It, it, try and tell me how she can damage the Gacha Dokoro. I think her best bet would be to try to create some sort of anting magic, right? Like she could dispel the magic oh, that is animating the Gacha Dokoro. Debuff. Yeah, she could, you know, do some sort of magical powering down. 
Do you but think is she that can the make... kind of fight that we really want to see? She waves her hands and the bones collapse to the ground. I know what happens. Tell me. Baba Yaga casts a spell and grows to 30 feet tall. Okay. I like it. And then they go at each other. And they're not they're not invulnerable, but they're yeah. both 30 feet tall. They're both extremely powerful. Baba Yaga still has magic at her disposal, but they're equal strength, I think. Does that affect things? All right. I think the mistake Baba is making here. I keep thinking you're talking about my grandma. Yeah. Uh, is going that 30 foot tall route and entering into physical combat. Oh, you think, okay. So I tell think, me what happens. I think, no, I think she tries that. I think that's a mistake. I think maybe at some point, right, she's able to knock the Gashidokuro to the ground. Mm. It collapses into a pile of bones. Well, she could turn, you know, the ground into Skittles with magic and he could slip. It's okay. Yeah. He slips on the Skittles because they're just everywhere. Yeah. A lot of Skittles. Just the complete rainbow. <laughs> and they were actually arranged in a mosaic to depict the Mona Lisa. <laughs> it was really impressive. Sounds delicious. Uh, but the gosh, Dokoro starts sliding all over them with his big bony feet collapses to the ground into a pile of bones whoa 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 baba yaga believes that she's taken it she starts she celebrates what does she say i did i did <laughs> Give me I, trophy. Win. I win but while that's happening <laughs> The hatred of the living continues to fuel the Gasha Dokoro. Oh, it's powering up. His oh, and it's probably angrier because it got embarrassed. Oh, it's so angry. It's so filled with hatred. And of course, Baba Yaga, thinking that she's already won, has already started to return to regular size. As you could tell from the fact that her voice was normal right then when I did it. What does it sound like when she's 30 feet tall? I did. <laughs> I win. Andre the Giant. Yeah, a, a very uncomfortable voice to have to try to <laughs> I like for. that. And that's when the Gashidokuro literally bites her head clean off of her shoulders and squeezes the blood out of her like she is a Capri Sun. I think that is the best, most perfect ending. She thinks she won. She does make an excellent move. She does, it does everything, but she's just too cocky yeah and that that hatred uh that the gosh and obviously i'm gonna say baba yaga being technically immortal is probably able to reform herself after the fight somewhere and scheme yeah for those of you who were sad <laughs> yeah once again no slouch she but i'm picturing the gotcha dokoro on. on the ground and the skittles and then he's on his back and he sits up like the undertaker you know and, yeah. and she doesn't see him and uh yeah just Bites, bites her, her head, head. lean off of her shoulders. What a fucking great ending. Yes. Congratulations to our new champion, the Gasha Dokuro. Yay. <laughs> okay, fellas. Uh, so, uh, yes, congratulations. What a fight. Ethan, your final thoughts on season five and our victor, the Gasha Dokuro. Uh, the Gacha Dokuro is terrifying. Anything fueled by hatred is scary. Even it's when you hatred meet a is very scary. That's the message here. That is because when you meet, so, like I've met chicks before that like their defining characteristic was anger or rage or hatred, you know, and like they they were bad people. Like this, the, you know, like this thing is really a horrible monster, and it, yeah. it and it can certainly, I mean, and it proved it. It took out a famous world class ancient witch. I, I just enjoyed the whole season, all 16 monsters, and being with the listeners. That's that's all I have to say. Well, I got to say, the Gasha Dokoro, probably one of our most badass contestants. Yeah. Happy as a clam to see him take the W, add himself to the Hall of Champions, right up there with uh, Spring Heel Jack. Baron Sam Samity. The no Baron no. Samity didn't win. The Loveland Frog took <laughs> that, <game. laughs> and lots of other great winners. 
and yeah, I also uh, had a fantastic time this season and I'm looking forward to next season and keeping the, this rig rolling. Hell yeah. And, and uh, we'll have a lot of uh, fun new stuff for you guys. We can't wait to share it with you. Uh, and if, as always, now's the time where I'm going to bug you before we go. If uh, you want to check us out on social media, you can find us at Instagram at Uncle Monster 6. You can find us on Blue Sky at UncleMonster.BSky.Social. You can find us now on YouTube, where we've got a lot of fun new stuff, uh, at Uncle Monster Podcast. Check out the YouTube. It's really funny. And there's some stuff you won't expect. So go take a look and subscribe and like. And uh, you can also find us on Patreon at Uncle Monster 6, where we've got a whole series of fun bonus episodes. We're working our way through paranormal activity. It only took three movies for us to watch a good one. So <laughs> uh, that ought to be pretty good. But most of all, uh, just thank you uh, so much for listening. And uh, we can't wait to see you next season. But most importantly, everyone, don't, don't get, get spooked. Win that trophy. I'm counting on you to go balls out for it. I only have one speed. Balls out, out. He don't look so bad to me. He don't look so bad to me. He don't look so bad to me. You 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 don't look so bad to me.